Yo, what is good, my people? Welcome to Wally's Weldon World. I'm the Well Professor. We're gonna go ahead and get into this video up in the rack, let you know what I'm doing. Pretty much, I heated up the pipe right now. That's just the water boiling out. We gotta clean it up so we can weld it. Welcome to Wally's Weldon World. I'm the Well Professor. And today we're gonna be making some tie-ins. I've already made one here, and we're gonna finish it up by making another tie-in here. If you see, it's, it's gonna be a tight squeeze for me right here. So I'm probably gonna have to hit it left-handed, put that bead in. So. Stay tuned, all right, guys? We're gonna go ahead and get into it today. All right, what we got going on here is kind of a fast forward motion from the crane, picking my piece up and flying it to where I need to be. This is fast forward mode because they go super, super slow. So this was the fit, it was a perfect fit. Slam up, jam up, my fitters know what I like. They do a perfect job in front of me and they got these pieces flying in perfect. They do their math and they got it on lock. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, strike an arc. You can see I grab it with my hands there. That's because I do not want to arc out on the pipe. I am up in the rack, and the last thing we need is a cutout. Notice the flex on my rod. Notice I'm not stepping my rod. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm dragging it. I got some high heat because that's how I like to bead. A lot of people are different. This is just how I roll, man. I like to have a tight fit so I can get a good bead. Let's go ahead and get to the bottom. So on the bottom, you don't really see it right here, but I like to put a big tack on the bottom. Why? Because I ain't trying to lose that fit. I'm trying to get the perfect fit I can get with that bead so that way I can continue doing what I need to do. As he kind of zooms down, you can kind of see I'm way over on the pipe. I probably got like a four inch tack on the bottom of that pipe. Why? Because that's just how I roll, man. I ain't trying to get myself a low one inch you know, tack because then it's gonna pull on me when I start running down the side. All right, let's get into it. We've already grinded the starts, so now we're gonna start beating all the way down the side. Notice I am not stepping my rod. Nope, heck no, I like to drag it. I'm a drag artist, I drag that bead down the pipe. It's a really tight fit, so I ain't gotta step it. When you got a big gap, you gotta step it. So I like to take a, a good, nice fit. That way I ain't gotta sit there and step my bead rod back and forth. Notice the gap is kinda really tight. It looks bigger than it probably is, but it's smaller than my 1 8 rod. See my stinger all busted up? Gotta make sure we don't arc out on the pipe. Because if we arc out on the pipe, that is an automatic cutout. And the last thing you want to do is have to make a cutout after the fitters have already got the piece cut to length. Here I go with my second rod. Yup. Gotta love it, man. I love beating. See, I'm always holding it with my hand. That way I can make sure I'm not arcing out all over the pipe. If you arc out over that pipe and you get a cutout, you're going to have a lot of people upset at you. And you're also wasting time. Don't want to waste no time. Just want to get it down and stack some dimes. And I love welding. I love beating. This is probably one of my favorite processes and uh, procedure to do is a downhill bead. Now I've been doing it for quite a while, shoot, for a real long time, and I love it. Come on, helper. Got to go up on that heat, because sometimes it's getting tight down there. You know me, slam up, jam up, and sometimes if I don't got the heat, I ain't penetrating, so I got to go up in the heat. Notice here, I'm on the other side. It was complicated, and I'd like to go ahead and drag it down with my left. Sometimes I can't well with my left, sometimes I can. Just depends what day it is, what kind of attitude I feel, if it's raining, if it's snowing, or you know, if I ate my breakfast or not. It really depends. But most of the time I'm able to pick up that left hand and use it. It's not my dominant hand, but I can definitely use it. You gotta be, you know, able to use both hands when you're up there. Sometimes you're not able to use your right hand. But I go ahead and show you that I can bead with that left hand. Ain't no thing to me. putting the fire in the pipe don't want too much coming out because it ain't gonna work for you bam so they I already okay, dropped well, down was able to get it with my right hand this, got some Together. moral support we from my helper this. sometimes the tie-in won't go the way you like it like I didn't like it so I had to grind it and then go back through it it just happens got to make sure that you're getting a 100% penetration in there because if not, you're catching a repair. I don't want a repair. I'll go ahead and let the helper grind it down. We don't grind it too much. We just grind it a little bit. If you grind it too much, you're going to blow through. There you go. He grinded a little bit too much, but not enough. But it'll work for me. Let's go ahead and hot pass this. This is a pipe liner rod. These are the ones I like to use, the Arc 80s. You notice I'm stepping it really fast. Why is that? Because if you take your time and try to stack it on there, you might be blowing a hole. Especially since the grinder kind of, you know, went a little bit deep on it. So I'm really basically just trying to get it in there and uh, get a good hot pass to make sure that bead push is in there. Just take a time, uh, take some moments, you know, and kind of look at my body posture there. Look how my hands are holding the stinger. Look how my rod is angled. 
notice that the flux is busted off on the back of the rod from where I bent it. So therefore, you can't weld past that point. Yeah, man, you just kind of take quick steps. We don't want to give you the arc shots yet. We basically want to show you how to do it, how to stand there, how to hold the rod, how to hold the stinger, because that's what's important. You guys know what you're looking for under the hood. You know what a puddle looks like. You know how it formulates. Take some time and understand this is how I do it. Notice the stretch I'm getting out of that rod. I started at the top and I haven't broke arc yet. I probably won't break arc until that rod is done and I'm ready to do the next one. I love hot path. Shoot, what am I kidding myself? I love welding. So let's go ahead and break arc pretty soon right now because I'm getting pretty low on that rod and we do not want to arc out. Bam. Quick little bend. Get the good body posture going. Notice how my arms are uh, on the pipe and on my knees. You gotta be steady, you gotta be still. I'm confident now with this type of rod that I'm not gonna arc out all over the place, so I don't need to hold that rod. I'm able to strike up inside the bevels. You wanna make sure that you're always strike, keeping the strike and the arc in the bevels. It's important. If you come outside of it, once again, that's a cutout. So on the other side, I went ahead and hopped up on the pipe. Why? Because I ain't trying to mess it up on that hard side. So I do got my hand on that rod, and I am making sure that I am focused. The moment you lose focus, things can go downhill quickly. You gotta be tied off 100% when you're in the rack. You gotta make sure you're not tied off to the handrails. The handrails might not hold your weight if you were to fall through that scaffolding somehow. It's a real complicated part right there, you know? For some people it's easier than others. I could have used my left hand, but I ain't trying to arc out over the pipe. My confidence wasn't there yet, so I didn't basically do it. But, you'll see later in the video, I do build some confidence. Go ahead and climb down there and uh, strike back up and make sure I can keep continuing on. Man, I love welding. How about you? You notice that time I was holding it with my, my other hand because I didn't want to make sure that I was striking all over the pipe. And there again, there's my confidence in using it with one hand. Go ahead and let the helper buff it off now. That's just the hot pass. I still got two more passes. I got to fill it and then I got to cap it. He does a good job, he can always do better, but he's in training, so he'll learn. Look at that big old knot. There's a little bit of slag there, so we go ahead and grind that out because you don't want to catch a repair. It's important. And again, I fire back up with my right hand, holding it with my left hand fingers to make sure I'm staying in the bevels. Again and again, I will tell you, you must keep the rod inside the bevels. Any kind of arc marks outside the bevel, and you are cutting that pipe out. That's the last thing you want to be doing is having a cutout. I noticed uh, I was getting in kind of a complicated spot, and I needed to get my right hand out of there. So I grabbed it with my left hand and removed my right arm from the position I was in and laid it on top of the pipe. Right about now. Bam. Because I'm going to be in trouble if I don't. Once I got down below the pipe, I was able to strike up with my right arm, my dominant arm, and keep my fingers on the rod to keep it steady to make sure I stayed inside the bevels. Remember again, stay inside the bevels. That is the arc zone. You do not want to be outside the arc zone. At this point right now, I'm filling it. My next step is capping it, but I still got to jump over to the other side and finish filling it once I get to the bottom of the pipe on this side. You notice now that my hoodie's up over my head because them sparks are flying down my back. And if I don't have a hoodie up over my head, they're going down my shirt. And trust me, if you're a pipeliner or a welder and you weld downhill pipe, you know them sparks will find any way they can to burn you. Last thing you want to be doing is getting burned. Again, I changed my body position to get comfortable because comfortable is what you need to be. The ABCs, always be comfortable. Learn how to always be comfortable in your positions of welding. When you get out of your comfort zone is when you can have an arc mark across the pipe. And that's the last thing you're trying to do is be uncomfortable and arc out across the pipe. Notice right here, I'm definitely trying to carry it as far as I can over. It's very important to carry the, that puddle as, as far across as you can. We've already grinded the top, so I already went and fired up. I'm not showing the helper grinded, because I think you guys know what a grinder looks like. Now this is the fill pass. 
I am filling it so that way I can prepare to cap it. Look at my helper. He is slick. I'm showing you it's an 8010 P1 Pipeliner Arc 80 rod. That's what I'm using. I love these rods. This is a 5 millimeter 8010 P1 Pipeliner Arc 80. I hope you guys are enjoying this video. If you notice, I got some cool stickers on my hood from some people that I like, some people that support me. Jay-Z3, Stack and Iron, and SoCo Hats. Notice my custom-made arm pad. That is basically to keep the heat off of me when I'm welding and up against the pipe because the pipe is hot. We've heated it up and we've been welding on it. So it's extremely hot. You don't want to touch it with bare skin or any kind of thin clothing because it will burn you. It'll blister you. Again, I have to break arc because the rod is busted there and I don't want to arc out or ruin my weld. Get a quick little bend, get a good comfortable position and strike arc and go at it again. One of my favorite things to do is weld. If you haven't learned that yet, pay attention. I love to bead, I love to hot pass, I love to fill it, I love to cap, I love to weld. You always have to be tied off when you're in the scaffolding. It's just part of the rules and you gotta follow them. If you're not following the rules, it could lead to consequences, it could even become part of your job where you may not no longer be there. So pay attention, follow the rules at all times. And again and again and again, stay inside the bell loop. That is called the arc zone, and it is important to stay inside the arc zone. If you don't stay inside the arc zone and you arc outside the pipe, the pipe is what you call, or is what they call star starring and scarring the pipe. And therefore, it makes it weak in that spot that you arc out. Sometimes you'll see people try to hide it, but I ain't got to fake it. So this isn't the best fill, but this is a good picture of the fill. At this point now, I am ready to cap the pipe. Now I tried to get as comfortable as I could up here because it's not a good position. So I am just making my best to do my best. It's not always easy. Sometimes I may make it look easy, but that's just because I've been doing it for quite a while. I've been pipe welding for quite a while in my career and I enjoy what I do. I just love to weld pipe. It's one of my favorite things to weld. Structural is cool, but welding pipe is cooler. Notice how you kind of see my body jolting a little bit is because I'm so crammed in that little spot it's hard to get a good weld. So you just got to make sure that you're doing your best to get a good weld at all times. And again and again and again I'll tell you, you've got to stay inside those bevels. The bevels are filled up now but that's still the arc zone. You can go a little bit side to side to put your cap but you can't be going excessively over it. Ugh. At this point now it's getting a little complicated for me. I'm, I'm not confident enough to cap it with my left hand. Because, you, like I've said before, again and again and again, if you strike out and arc all over the pipe, it's a cutout. And even though you've come this far, there's no hiding it. People are watching me, and they're paying attention. I got a guy down on the ground who is my fire watch. And you better believe it. He's keeping an eye on me to make sure I'm not doing something I should not be doing. It's important to always have people there watching your back and having your back. Those are the guys that are going to help save your life in case something goes wrong. And I crawled up on the pipe and tried to get the best position I can to carry it down the pipe. People will say again and again there is no hard side to welding, but this is kind of a hard position to get to. And if you're not completely confident and dominant with that left hand, you might not want to try it. So I didn't even risk it. Now you hear me say it again and again and again, you always got to be comfortable. It's what they call the ABCs of welding. Always be comfortable. Get your position, be comfortable, strike an arc, and carry on your way. I've said it once, I'll say it again. At this moment now, I am capping the pipe. This is probably one of my favorite, favorite parts of welding, is putting on the cap. Because that's going to show to everybody who walks by it or looks up to it if it's a good weld or not. If you've been in these places, 
you can look at all the welds that have been performed mostly and you can tell who gave their time and effort, who has their passion in about welding, and who just wanted to slap it together and get it done quickly. Notice now I'm trying to carry that puddle on the bottom as far across as I can because when I come and tie in, I don't want to be trying to short arm my own self. Sometimes people will short arm you. So let's let's talk about this. I did grind this start because we don't want to have any kind of repair right here. So this is the arc zone. This is where I'll be striking up and going. So you want to stay inside those bevels. I'm very confident here to get a hot enough puddle and burn into that part where I grind and start laying a nice little cap. My caps aren't perfect, but better believe I'm striving to make them the best I can every time because all eyes are on me at all times. Notice my body posture. Notice my focus. I'm not struggling. I feel ease. I'm comfortable. And this is just how it's got to be. If you're trying to make welds and you're not comfortable, it's most of the time you're not going to have a good weld. It's not going to come out as good as you wanted it. So always try to be comfortable when you're making these welds. And remember, again and again, I'll tell you, you got to stay inside the bevels. When you're doing the cap, you can go a little bit on the side of the bevels, but you don't want to go too much because too much will be an excessive. And then for it might not look that good or it might just be undercut. So you got to make sure that you got the right temperature. You also got to make sure that you have the right travel speed. It's kind of a formula, the right heat, the right travel speed, and the right positioning of that welding rod. Those things will help you get the best cap that you can do. They will help you out in the end. That way you know you're going to be doing something nice. None of my welds are always perfect, but you better believe I'm always striving for the best perfect weld I can possibly make. Because I know in the end, X-ray is going to come back and they're going to look at it and they're going to give it a visual inspection. Notice now, I'm again trying to be as comfortable as I can. This is the best position for me sometimes, striking up like this because if you're too low below that weld it might mess you up and you might not get that good of a start it's important to have a good start tie-in every time you can either trap slag have undercut many things can go wrong if you're not paying attention and being comfortable now remember I came way over on the pipe on the bottom on the other side so that for I'm not gonna short arm myself which means I don't have to go further under the pipe I'll be able to make a nice tie-in and then break arc and right here I kind of show you the method and technique of breaking arc that is proper. Some people are different. I guess I might be different than most people, but this is how I like to do it. I make sure that once I tie in, that I can go ahead and get out of my puddle. If my puddle is full enough, I can strike away. If it's not, I need to pull back to cover the puddle. Boom, there it is, I pushed out. Like I said, I'm not the best welder. It's never perfect, but you always gotta strive for perfection. That's just the goal I have in my life for welding is strive to be the best I can. It's not always perfect, but you got to make it. So let's get into the heat. That's what I'm capping on. That's the heat I like to cap on with the 5.0 pipe liners. I'm going to go ahead and switch it down to where I start beating. When I start beating, I usually have it on 50. That's 119 amps. I got to go up 5 with my machine. It's 131 amps. That's 55 on my remote. This is 60 on my remote, 143 amps. The most I really go up is maybe five more. So I'll be beating at 154 amps. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like it. Comment on it. Share it with everybody you know, especially your friends. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, guys. We'll wrap to you later. Peace out.